here today and, and present um, on the Prepare for Living Care projects and uh, most of all on the outputs and outcome of the project and then what uh, has happened uh, since then. Um, can you move on to the next slide? So we see who is presenting, thank you. So uh, yes, I'm Florence Trebunemtsov. I work for SOS Children's Villages International. I'm based in Vienna, Austria, and uh, I'm project uh, manager. Uh, I will uh, present to you the, the background of the project, um, what we have done roughly, and the key achievements. Um, but I believe that the most interesting part of this webinar uh, will uh, be the one um, presented by my colleagues. So here you see there is um, Eva Martin Balzeo from SOS Children's Villages in Spain. And uh, she's head of uh, public funding there. She was the pro project coordinator uh, when we were uh, implementing the project. And she's going to inform us about how activities uh, have continued uh, in Spain after the end of the, of the project. Um, then we will have a presentation from our uh, colleagues from Croatia. So Krasimir Makvic, he is National Advocacy Advisor at, at SOS Children's Villages Croatia, and uh, Boyan Ksnik, who is Living Care Support Expert there. Uh, they will um, present to us uh, their experience in piloting um, a function called living care experts in Croatia. I'm not saying more because uh, you will you will hear what that is um, when when the turn uh, comes. Then we'll move on to Italy um, with our colleagues um, Margarine, Margarita Brasca, she's advocacy advisor uh, at SOS Children's Villages Italy, and Teresa Pietavale, uh, she's project and training officer there, and they will share with us um, what has been done there and what is continuing with uh, regards to partnerships with national and local stakeholders. Yes, yeah, so. Um, we uh, got two grants from the uh, Rights, Equality and Citizenship Program of the European Union, as you can see here. And with those grants, we ran two uh, projects, two cross-national projects. I'm not going to uh, read all the countries that participated. You can uh, read that on, on this slide. Um, so lots of uh, partners and in the first project together, we uh, basically created and, and, and piloted then the, the different activities that were also more or less reproduced in the second project with a few uh, changes here and there and uh, adds on. Um, but yeah, so the second project is like a spin-off of the, of the first one. Uh, you can see on this slide that most of the partners are SOS chapters in the different um, countries, but actually there were many more participants in the project, uh, key stakeholders uh, in those countries um, that were part of national steering groups uh, that oversaw and um, led the implementation of the, of the project in the respective countries. We can move to the next slide. So uh, what we wanted to achieve was to embed a child right based culture into child protection systems, uh, especially when it comes to improving outcomes for children, young people who are leaving care. When we uh, use the term leaving care, here we mean the preparation uh, phase before uh, leaving the care setting, then the transition uh, phase, and also the, the aftercare. Um, time. We did this by um, producing first and then uh, rolling out uh, training um, and then uh, also with a set of awareness raising and uh, advocacy activities. And very importantly, uh, in, in these projects, youth participation was really at the heart of uh, all the activities. So in each project partners, uh, there was a group of young adults with lived experience of care uh, who was created and who uh, 
participated um, all across the different activities, starting from um, the scoping, so the small research which we uh, did at the start of both projects, um, then training of trainers, uh, the national trainings, they were active as uh, co-trainers that had a really um, impactful um, effect on, on the learning of the training participant. Um, of course, when it comes to developing policy recommendations and communicating uh, to key stakeholders, they are also very, very present and active. Um, in the second project, we piloted a, a so-called online one-stop shop, so a, a platform where care leavers could um, connect, find information, but also um, receive support. And uh, this was um, of course, informed and, and the content was uh, designed by the care leavers, but also in some uh, countries, the platform was coordinated by, by them. Um, yeah, I think these are the main um, activities, I would say, where we enjoyed really the, the input uh, and the work uh, of the care leavers together with um, us. So I mentioned briefly the scoping before so as one of the activities that was the first uh, of our activities in both uh, project and it's a small uh, research uh, that took place in all the participating countries trying to find out um, the status, the state of the living care system um, of what kind of provisions are um, uh, available or not, um, how is the practice. Um, yeah, and this was um, coordinated when well, the methodology was developed by 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 Celsius. Uh, you saw one of our uh, partners in the first in the first project, Celsius, uh, just to present who they are to those of you who might not know them. Um, so it's Center for Excellence for Children's Care and Protection, um, based at the University of Strathclyde in uh, Scotland, and they are academic experts when it comes to child rights, uh, child protection, alternative care, living care, many more uh, uh, topics related to that field and uh, they led the development of the training methodology material uh, gave expert guidance on child participation and uh, to come back to the scoping they developed the methodology um, and analyzed the data so we wanted with the scoping to find out what works what needs to change and uh, as you can see here there were three key components in um, the way we collected data, so peer-to-peer -peer interviews that was uh, uh, performed by uh, young people uh, interviewing other young people. And then there was a mapping in each country of the living care system. And uh, of course, uh, also questionnaire answered by key stakeholders. Um, I think we're ready to have our first poll before I continue. Yes, so we would like to ask you which three aspects do you think young people who took part in the scoping felt were the most important uh, aspects of being cared for in relationships between care leavers and support workers so the most important aspects I believe we have it. 
Um, so, okay, there's a tie. That's very interesting. So of course, everything uh, here is important in its own way. Um, and um, especially in the situation we are in now with COVID pandemic, uh, uh, things um, shifted a little bit. And uh, over right now, I would say the basic or core, uh, um, like financial support, housing support, uh, are some of the things that uh, care leavers are saying are, are really problematic uh, and they're not getting um, enough of. But when we did our scoping, what came out most um, was their need for a trusting, respectful relationship and feeling generally cared for. So not feeling like um, files or um, you know numbers in, in, in the system, but really uh, having a sense of uh, being able to, to develop a sense of belonging and, and, and stability um, through uh, relationship the, between them and their main um, um, support person, whoever, whoever, whoever that is. But um, yeah, they felt that uh, too often things are, are changing around them. They are not uh, involved. Um, they don't know what's happening to them and they don't have uh, enough chance to to arrive some, somewhere and 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 really, um, you know, stay there, supported, cared for, um, enabled to heal somehow and uh, thrive and develop to their fullest potential. So well, there are many more other things that came out of the of the scoping. Um, one of the key things is, uh, and we are hearing this over and over, we've been hearing this for years, the age of um, living care, um, 18, way too early. Uh, most of them are not, are not ready, and this shouldn't be uh, one day to the next type of transition, but uh, something smooth and uh, supported, uh, accompanied a transition um, that come, sometimes can have some setbacks, but um, shouldn't look like they are jumping into the, the cold sea without any, any support. Um, yeah, all this informed, the, the outcomes of the scoping informed the creation and of the of the training, so the content of the training, the methodology of the of the training. Um, you can see here on this slide an, an overview of the different uh, days. So it's a six day course. So it's delivered in two sessions, um, separated by approximately six weeks, where there's possibility to. Um, try first learning uh, in practice and then come back to the next course and deepen uh, on some on some topics. Um, you can see uh, here the the orange um, prepare for living care practice guidance manual. So it's a practice guidance. It's a publication that is now available in I don't know, many languages, all the languages of the countries uh, that have been partners in both projects. And um, that can be used by a wide range of professionals, uh, including also decision makers. It sets the frame, I would say, and, and um, presents the key principles of uh, you know, what should really be part of a working um, living care process and, and, and system. And then the green uh, brochure that you see here on this slide in the training manual, and this is uh, a tool for the master trainers. So for the, the people in each country who have been trained to deliver the, the training. Yeah, and uh, it's really a participatory, very interactive uh, training. 
um, reflective so that the, the learning can really sink um, and stay. And uh, as we mentioned uh, before, uh, participation of uh, young adults is, is also key in, in the methodology of this training and, and very impactful having them in the room uh, with the trainees um, as, as co-trainers. So now just an overview of uh, the key project achievements. I've mentioned the first ones already. So these are the, the, the tools, the manuals that, that came out, the uh, practice, so-called practice for living here, practice guidance and, and training methodology and manual. But then uh, we also have had 200 young people participating in uh, the different project activities, 46 uh, of them as uh, co-trainers in the different countries. Uh, 68 master trainers who completed the, completed the training of trainers. So there are, uh, you know, a lot of them out there in uh, your countries and they can still deliver the training, of course, if we are able to, to finance that. But um, the, the training, the, the, the countries have the, the resource um, to continue rolling out this um, great training and uh up to now so in the frame of those two projects then 800 care professionals completed the the training um in the evaluation of the training then uh, they gave very positive uh, feedback uh, we also um, managed to uh, have a small impact um uh, assessment at at the end where um really we could come to the conclusion that some things had changed in practice. So care professionals told us that they are now better, way better equipped to work with uh, young people in this phase of uh, transition, that they are um, better able to relate to them, to connect to them, to support them. They have uh, useful tools and um, yeah, they, are, they have improved their, their way of working with the young people. Um, really working with them, I would say, in this transition phase. So that's it from my side. I'm ready to hand over the microphone to my colleague Eva from Spain, who is going to talk to us about the continuation of the training program in Spain after the end of this project. Thank you, Florence, and good morning, everyone. Well, as um, she said before, uh, I'm the project uh, coordinator. I started uh, to work uh, in, in this project in 2017. And um, still, uh, until now, I'm, I'm assuming that role. Um, when we uh, start to implement the project and the trainings, we didn't uh, do it at national level. So we started little by little in different regions where we have programs. First, in 2018, we did it in Barcelona and Tenerife in Canary Islands. So we trained 86 care professionals and we had uh, six young experts as co-trainers. Then um, in 2019, although the, the project uh, was finished um, in the, that fair, first stage uh, financed by the European Commission, uh, because the uh, care, um, the living care process is on the agenda of the government, we apply uh, on a call for proposals and uh, we got a first uh, grant, uh, 20,000 uh, euros to keep doing the trainings. So we move into other uh, two different locations where we have uh, programs. Uh, one in Vigo in, in Galicia is up uh, west and then also in Cuenca. So you, you can see it in red color. So at that time in 2019, we trained uh, 83 care professionals and we had 10 new young experts uh, participating as co-trainers. And also we did um, a new training in Tenerife, this time uh, for um, our co-workers, because we think we know these trainings are really good, 
and the results, we see, we've seen the results already uh, with external colleagues from different uh, NGOs and uh, social services and public administration. So we consider we must do this uh, training internally for our coworkers. So we can uh, say that we have two different phases. First, we do it externally, and then next year in the same uh, location where we have rolled out the training, we do it internally, okay? Then 2020, we got a new grant, uh, this time 35,000 uh, euros to roll out the trainings uh, in Madrid and in Granada. And then uh, also Vigo, the regions where we uh, did the trainings in 2019 also. But uh, um, what happened? Um, we had the pandemic. So uh, our trainings were supposed to take place in, in March and April. So we have to cancel. Right now, we haven't been able to do it uh, because you can't not do these trainings online. So we have uh, to postpone them to 2021. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it next, the first uh, semester yeah, of next year. And then also next year, uh, we will implement the trainings in a new uh, location, Zaragoza. Also, we got a new grant, 35,000 uh, uh, euros, and uh, we will train uh, approximately 75 uh, care professionals. And we have already a new 10 a new young experts participating. So by the end of 2021, uh, we, uh, we will have trained a total of 344 uh, professionals. And uh, we will have uh, had 41 young experts uh, participating as co-trainers and a rather around another uh, 40 uh, more young experts participating in different activities uh, of the project. So it's true if, if you don't get fi uh, finance, you cannot roll out the trainings, but I think we are really lucky. We have the support of the government and uh, our idea is to, to keep uh, implementing you know, in the future because we really think uh, the, the professionals need this uh, space not only to learn uh, and to have new tools to work with uh, our uh, young uh, people, but also to, to have this uh, reflection space and to share experiences and to improve their uh, daily work. So uh, I think we're having uh, great results. Next, Gabi. And uh, I also want to share uh, with you and highlight um, other uh, different activities of the, the project. Before rolling out um, the, um, the trainings, we always organize like a breakfast presentation where we invite different stakeholders like public uh, authorities and uh, different NGOs. So, so far we have had um, 125 um, different stakeholders in, in the breakfast, pre uh, breakfast presentations that we have done. We always have, um, I mean, I, I don't do it uh, by myself. I always have one young expert, one or two or three with me. And they're the ones who present the project, the trainings, um, the background, the previous experiences, um, what they are for, how uh, long they last, how is the reg reg registration procedure. So um, it's a really um, it's, it's, it's better to to do it this way than just to send an email inviting you know, for the training. So I think um, this works uh, works out uh, really good. Then we also keep doing the the peer to peer interviews because in Spain we have um, um, the legislation is not at national level but it's at regional level. So we think we must know what's going on there. How is this process of living care? And the information we get uh, is really valuable. We need to have data. If we want to improve changes, we need to know where we are and what we need to, to have to change. 
um, this year, um, next year, uh, 2021, we are planning to roll out an impact assessment in collaboration with the University of Comillas. And uh, we want to um, do this assessment with all the uh, professionals that have been taking part in the trainings uh, to see really, yeah, okay, if this is, um, if this training is useful and how they have improved their work since they did the training. <clears throat> and also we are doing a, a lot of ad advocacy actions with our young experts because I think they are the best ambassadors for the project. And uh, well, uh, you can see on the slide that uh, they had a private audience with the king and queen of Spain explaining the project. And uh, they got um, different awards. The last, the most recent one is um, Alexandra. Uh, she got uh, from the National uh, Youth Institute, the Social Commitment Award uh, because uh, what she has done in the project. So I think um, with this um, Prepare for Living Care gives us a lot of things, not only because of the training of the professionals, but also because it gives our young people a, a real space for participation. And um, I can see the difference, uh, how they, they, they grow up uh, within the project and how they get really empowered. So, I think we are really lucky to be able to work with them. I learn a lot of things every day from them. Um, I'm here just to, if you have any questions, uh, yes, please uh, contact me through the chat. I'll be pleased to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Very inspiring to see how things continue to spread in, in Spain. Um, we have now the chance not only for questions in the chat, but also directly if you want to unmute yourself and ask something, you can do it now. We will have further chances uh, also later on. I think the questions that uh, are in the chat that have been answered for now. If there are no questions right now, then I'll hand over the microphone and the stage to my Croatian colleagues, starting with Creation. Thank you very much, Florence. Uh, as uh, Florence already introduced me, my name is Kresha Mir. I'm a, a national advocacy advisor from SOS Croatia, and I have been a project coordinator for this uh, uh, living care project uh, in Croatia. So I'm gonna present to you very briefly what we try to do after we have finished with the official project and the trainings. Uh, what was our idea is to take it one step further and to see how this training, how this knowledge, which the experts got in the training, uh, works in practice, really. And we wanted to evaluate that. Um, so we gathered, um, we formed a, an idea for a pilot project called Personal Mentor for Care Leavers. And we based it on the recommendations that the young people and experts from our project gave us. And uh, the project ended um, by the end of 2018. And we formed a small group of five NGOs and one state alternative care provider. And we discussed this idea uh, with them and asked them if they wanted to be included. So in the end, uh, in April 2019, we have um, we have had eight personal mentors, or translated, we had eight um, uh, leaving care, uh, eight um, alternative care experts, we ha which have passed through the training, and were willing to uh, start with one year piloting of this knowledge, which means they would start to work with a young care leaver for one year. Uh, from different uh, alternative care settings and also from different regions in Croatia. And they, uh, they accepted that their work would be evaluated by the Faculty of Educational and Rehabilitational Sciences. So they started uh, roughly uh, 
we have uh, with, uh, to get a call from the draft of this evaluation research uh, when these um, uh, when our colleague this personal mentors the um, entered the pilot project they were they were asked to fulfill a small uh, entry survey as well as the young people they were working with this was the baseline and then after approximately uh, a little more than a year um, now uh, currently this uh, this uh, their work is being evaluated so they have uh, gone through the focus groups uh, through the individual interviews, uh, also the care professionals uh, uh, or personal mentors, and also the, the young people they have been working with. And uh, very briefly, somewhere in the beginning of, um, of uh, next year, we will have concrete results of this work. So we will know firsthand if, if this work has been um, successful in a way that um, uh, this, uh, this work is really a uh, work and uh, this will be the basis for our advocate for young care leavers, which we would call, which is um, also present in some uh, legal systems in, in, in Europe as well. Which hey, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. Hey, so. Indeed, the young, yes? Can you turn off your Hello? video because your your connection is a bit bad? Can you just turn off your video? Maybe it will help. I turned Thank it you. off. Thank you. Where did where did you lose me? In which part did you lose me? So I repeat, maybe. Just repeat the last part. Yeah. Okay. So the um, this uh, this evaluation study or research will. Okay. You we can't hear you. As a foundation, we work. We will try to advocate for young care leavers will be formed. And can we, you hear we, me now? Now we can't hear you so well. It, it, it's bad quality. Maybe Boyan, if you take over, maybe you can also say the, what Kresho was meant to finish with. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. I'm sorry, Kresho, but we, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, right now, yes. Yeah. I will try one more time. I'm sorry for the, uh, yeah, for the technical difficulties. I wanted to say in the end that uh, um, this work of the, these personal mentors and the evaluation uh, study will be used as a basis for mm -hmm. um, advocacy with our Ministry of Social Welfare to uh, to implement a new social service called either personal mentor for young care leavers or a social mentor, which will guarantee this uh, every young care leaver in Croatia that he will have his mentor uh, when he enters the leaving care phase. This was also one of the recommendations from the young people and from the experts themselves. Uh, currently, there is no such service. So some young people uh, get this, uh, uh, some form of this service. Some young people don't get it, but we want to we want to implement uh, this as a standard. And now uh, I will let my colleague Boyan um, tell you a little about uh, a little bit more about um, how we are implementing this uh, personal mentor program or a similar program in SOS Children's Villages Croatia with our young care leaders. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Croatia. So maybe I should talk without camera to prevent this uh, problem. And uh, my apologies, uh, because I have construction works near to my building and in apartments below me. So I'll try to be louder than them. So hi, everybody. I'm Boyan, and I work for SOS Children's Villages Croatia as a living care support expert to prepare young people from the youth community or youth care for independent life. And right at the beginning, I would like to brag a little bit that we were a runner up for the Dare for Care Award within SOS organizations for this role of mine, for innovative ideas and programs that empower the lives of children and families. And we won the third prize at this year's first International Care Leavers Convention for the poster you watch, uh, which describes the role of a uh, living care support expert. Uh, this role was created in response to the need of young people and educators in our communities but also in response to the recommendations of this project. 
Uh, although young people in SOS have been uh, preparing for independence since day one, during the last year uh, of high school, they get to know me and we start working on topics important for the period of the, that period of their lives. And I will retell this part of mine in a very practical way so that you know what specific things uh, I do while I'm working as a living care support expert. Uh, living care support expert empowers young people who are in the process of living or have left the care system and begin the path to adult independent life. Uh, we meet twice a month in their space or somewhere in the city. Now in COVID time, we hold uh, online meetings and process almost all the topics provided by the plan and program and their individual wishes and needs. Uh, we talk about continuing ed education uh, and possible scholarships, about employment and how to keep the first job. Uh, we talk about housing and finding adequate accommodations to start an independent life. Of course, uh, we also talk about finances and how to dispose of money. Uh, then I can say that uh, we learn to cook, uh, calculate household budget, uh, to know how much to spend on food and utilities and how to save some money. And during the last year of their care, we also, for example, visit rented apartments and learn what to look out for so that the owner of the apartment does not deceive them, for example. And as you can see, the working methods are different from individual counseling to group workshops and institutional visits. So we talk, we draw, we write, drink coffee and share information about life uh, on an equal footing. And it's very important to know that my role is also important for the transitional part of their lives uh, when they leave care and everything we learned and practice now becomes a reality. Then, uh, but also during this preparation, I also provide emotional support and we talk about how to deal with feelings of loneliness and how to deal with fear of the future. Uh, and I support young people in finding adequate information needed in daily life and support them in the development of practical skills. So in short, these are the main activities I'm involved as a living care support expert. Uh, but I would like uh, to say something more because we uh, conducted an evaluation of the usefulness and the needs for this role and the need provides to be very high both among young people who are preparing to leave care and among young people who have started independent living. Usefulness is uh, rated high but it's different uh, in those who are already independent and those who are just start to preparing for independence but all emphasize the importance uh, of the existence of that role. So finally, I would like to point out that while I'm doing this job, I notice how important it is for young people to have a professional who deals with this period of their lives and to have someone to can turn to for help in crisis situations. So therefore, this role should be distinguished from different volunteer roles and for this reason, we are trying in Croatia to fight for this form of support of young people to enter the law on, on uh, social welfare as a regular service for all uh, young people in, in the process of living care. So for the end of my part, uh, we have a question for you. So I would like for you to please to answer. So do you find the role of uh, living care support expert useful? Cool. I think you'll keep your job, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah, thank you for answering the poll and thank you, Christian Boyan, for presenting um, what's going on in Croatia. I'm really curious to see the, uh, you know, outcome of this piloting phase and uh, hope that uh, it will result in really anchoring this role uh, in the living care system. And then I can dream that this wouldn't uh, only uh, happen in Croatia, but everywhere because it's really a key element uh, that is needed and, and that is missing everywhere. This, this bridge to this person that um, is, stays uh, at the side of the uh, young adult in this transition and adaptation um, phase. We have another Q&A session now. Um, I don't see any questions in, in the chat, but if anyone would like to unmute and ask the question, please do so. No? Okay, so then we'll continue. Um, we'll move on to, to Italy and to my colleagues Margarita and Teresa. They're going to talk to us about strengthening partnerships. Yes, thank you, Florence, and good morning, everyone. Um, yes, we, we want to focus today on the, the importance that strengthening partnership with national and local stakeholders had for the implementation of the training in Italy. And I wanted to start from the, from the very beginning because um, from the organization of the training itself, uh, since um, among the topics addressed by the Prepare for Living Care trainings, there are, uh, as you can see from the slide, uh, intersexual reality and networks in educational training, in educational settings. Uh, so since the very beginning of the organization of the training in the selection process, we encouraged uh, and tried as much as possible to have mixed groups of participants from different areas and services with different uh, ways of working with young people as well. Um, and in order to reach uh, all the care services from the, of the territory we were focused on, um, we consider relevant uh, it was important to find uh, um, support uh, from the municipalities where we are organizing the training with. So to file a local person of reference uh, in the five municipalities where we implemented the training um, because they, they were crucial. They were very important in uh, involving, uh, especially the social workers, because as you know very well, care professionals are Margaret, we can't we can't hear you. We've lost you. Maybe Teresa, could you take over? Because Marga seems to be yeah, she, she disappeared. <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> and Margarita, just a, just a note if you can hear us. It's the best to go out and come back, but I mm -hmm. think she already did it. So, okay. Okay, so maybe we're going to wait. Uh, uh, here I am. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes. I don't know what happened with Zoom. I, I guess it was Zoom. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough time for internet connections. So we yes. have to. <laughs> so what I was going to say is that uh, um, we drafted some criteria for participants and shared them with the contact person on a local level that supported us in spreading the training opportunity with the social services and the residential care facilities in the in the region. Um, so that uh, we could contact relevant people from the context where they work, collect their names and uh, also, they supported us to find uh, free venues for the training. So it was a very um, crucial support because sometimes it's difficult to organize things from distance. So it was important for the training to be effective. Um, 
Also, uh, in order to boost participation of care professionals and to give a re relevant recognition of the training, we, we also signed uh, an agreement with the National Council, the Italian National Council of the Social Worker. Um, and uh, we, we actually had the chance to accreditate the training. So they, they received uh, credits from taking part in the trainings. Um, next please. Thank you. And then here we are, we started the training and uh, that's another um, critical part because um, when, we, when we realized that when we started the training in the first cities, we realized that um, care prof professionals were showing a huge frustration and disappointment about the living care system in Italy and in their cities in the regions. Um, in Italy as well, there is a big difference between regions, especially from, um, from a quality point of view. Um, so, and this was something that really uh, influenced their presence in the setting, in the classroom. So uh, together with the master trainers, uh, we decided to face uh, this uh, challenge in order to properly manage uh, this frustration, but at the same time, give dignity to the inputs of the trainees. And uh, this is still um, connected to uh, strengthening partnership with national stakeholders. Why? Because we took inspiration from this uh, difficult situation and we organized, uh, we decided to dedicate a part of the last afternoon of the training, uh, linking to uh, another key topic of the training that is advocacy. Um, and we decided to organize a moment where to collect all the group recommendations um, for the improvement of the living care system. So from their point of view. And we, together with them, we committed to bring these recommendations to local and national decision makers and key stakeholders. And uh, um, as spokespersons for the group, then in some cases, they, they decided to be themselves. Some care professional decided to be the, the uh, spokesperson of the group, but I will uh, leave the floor to my colleague Teresa to, to explain you better how this uh, develops um, concretely on level of uh, public events. Hi, everybody. It's Teresa from Italy. So uh, as Margarita were, was saying, uh, following our commitment to be the spokesperson, after the training, we organized in every city a local public roundtable in which care professionals and their superiors, as well as significant local stakeholders and policymakers, were invited at the same table to present and discuss the various challenges in the system that's putting them on the agenda of decision makers, talking about the project and sharing the recommendations of every group. So also in some cities, the trainees share the personal and very emotional presentation of how important the training has been for them and why changes are needed in the living care system. On a national level, we also have published a pamphlet entitled Future is Built Day by Day that includes the contribution of the care professionals that took part to the trainings, as well as the contribution of a group of care leaders. And we still use this tool, this pamphlet, for our advocacy activities on a national level. Next, uh, next slide, please, Gabi. OK, thank you. Uh, since we organized these events together with the National Care Leaders Association Agivolando, each roundtable involved the strong contribution of the regional group of the Care Leavers Network of Agevolando. Uh, therefore, uh, alongside the care professionals' presentation, uh, the young people, as always, wrote their instances and resilience stories, uh, showing the results of their work within the network and sharing their recommendations to improve the living care system with a particular eye on the emotional aspects. Um, it proved actually to be very powerful and effective to join the instances of social workers and the instances of care leavers. We consider it a good practice in, uh, in advocacy activities. This also uh, resulted uh, in an opportunity to share views on living care system 
also on a decision-making level, and it actually boosted potential virtuous collaborations on a local level. In fact, due to the national lack of funds and projects for living care, it was extremely important to, act, to activate the, the local level. So these meetings are an opportunity to boost uh, links already in place with partners from the third sector and to widen the channels of communications with institutional partners, uh, thus making possible the birth of new collaborations, both with uh, local institutions and key stakeholders. Uh, in fact, uh, the network and the joint action of a group of associations enabled in 2017 the allocation of an experimental fund for care leavers managed by the Italian Ministry of Labour and, and Social Policies. Now the fund uh, has been renewed for three years more and it has been extended to care leavers uh, until um, 25 years of age. And this victory hasn't been easy, of course, and all this wouldn't happen without a constant and joint advocacy work, uh, taking advantage of all the opportunities and taking time to cultivate the relationship with, with key stakeholders. Eventually, uh, this also resulted in an invitation to SOS Children's Villages Italy, by the Ministry of Labour and Social Policies and the partner institution that uh, is in charge of managing the fund to implement the Prepare for Living Care training to the focused persons, the, the national tutors and the regional managers of the experimental fund itself. So uh, for us, we, we have done, if you have questions about that, we are free and available to answer. And thank you very much for your attention. Space for questions. Congratulations, another great example, um, really of uh, working at uh, all levels with, with all people concerned in order to uh, try to achieve change. Um, and move things forward for improving outcomes for care leavers. So I think a very good example of that. Are there any questions? No questions? Well, if you don't take your chance now, that's actually our last uh, Q&A uh, opportunity. After that, I'm going to round up. Okay. Um, yes, so um, we, I mean, this project, other projects, um, every time you read something concerning uh, care leavers, the living care process, not only in Europe, all over the world, then uh, similar gaps um, show up. And I think um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's in a rich country, so-called rich country or so-called de development country. Calibers are a very vulnerable group and it's also often a very invisible uh, group, um, but they have voices, they have energy, and um, I don't know if you had the opportunity to attend the International Caregivers Convention. It was online because of the, the COVID situation, so really a chance um, for everyone to attend, and you can still attend because you can listen to the recording. It was really, really inspiring, just happened actually uh, at the end of November. Uh, with the conclusion, conclusion round just last uh, Saturday. And um, I mean, it was run by care leavers, designed by care leavers. Um, there is a movement coming out of it, an international um, uh, movement of care leavers with a website that they have created um, and uh, where they, they want to share resources, um, but also to connect to each other, to connect to people who can help them, who can fund them. Um, for all the initiatives that uh, they have in mind. I mean, the only thing I can say is uh, go and check it out. It's really, really worth it. Um, 
support them in any ways you can. Um, yeah, it's um, time for the end of the year with some New Year resolutions. So maybe each of us can uh, think what we can do. Just one thing next year in support of um, uh, care livers and will help things moving forward. Um, thank you for having attended this uh, webinar with us today. I pass on the microphone to Vesna. She has just some final, um, I think, questions so, so yes. she would like to ask everybody <laughs> <laughs> thank you florence for, for and thank you all for sharing such a really uh, great work and practice you have in different countries and it was really a pleasure uh, to listen to this all inspiring information that you shared with us so uh, just before i close the webinar for today i would just like to answer on our uh, last poll which is evaluation poll like always um you will see it in a second uh, on your screen. And also, like always, you know, all of our Child Hub uh, webinars, if you want to receive a certificate of attending this webinar, you can write an email to info at childhub.org. I will write it uh, in the chat. You can find it there. So please write it uh, email uh, to this email address if, if you want to receive it. Uh, and also, uh, we have uh, on the Child Hub, we, we have always very interesting webinar in, in the next period. So please uh, stay with us. And also, you can uh, register to our newsletter so we, you will receive all the new information about the next webinars in your email address. Uh, again, thank you all for being with us today. Uh, I uh, would like uh, to uh, that you have a really nice rest of the day and really nice uh, rest of the, of the week. Thank you. Goodbye.